What's going on, nerds? Welcome back to Comic Book Nerd Nation, episode 118. I'm Fox 2. We got Teabag and Pirate. Damn it. I was going to say something about my teabagging, but then you beat me to it. Beat you to it, bitch. And, and I, uh, now I'm just going to teabag. And Topher. <sighs> Ugh, I was going to say something, then I just yawned instead. <clears throat> so that, yeah, nice. I yawned. Nice. Um. Whole effing Brian is not with us today. He's MIA, not sure where he's at, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to jump, I'm going to launch right into this. Um, so in the off time, we have a, a group chat that we do that uh, we kind of discuss potential topics and things that we, we've we seen that we'd like to talk about, and Brian was a huge advocate for talking about this, so I would hate to leave it out. Um <laughs> So we're going to talk about it. The way you said that, it sounded like he was, he was a huge advocate. Like, yeah. I was I was waiting for a huge asshole about it. Uh, that, too. There was that. Um, so, Brian, in his off time, loves to scour the internet for um, any kind of anything negative about anything that DC's doing in the cinematic universe. And this week, he found um, that there are three... three um, scholars i guess would be the best way to put them uh, classify them i get rather that developed a computer algorithm that projects the the d degree of certainty that a movie will make 7.3 million dollars of profit that's after production costs so these people have have developed uh, an essentially an early stage of this of this algorithm, and they released that it's saying that Batman v Superman, ha according to their program, has a thirty two percent chance of making seven million dollar profit. And Brian just thinks that that is just absolutely damning for the film that it means that the film's going to do terrible financially at the box office and that it's uh, going to be a bad movie. Um, I mean, I, I, I absolutely refuse to see a film that's possibly only going to make $7 million. I, good day, Batman v Superman. Good um, day. Yeah, I mean... I, just, I, I think that's a, it's an interesting number, $7.3 I, I Yeah, if it was $7.4 million, it's going to be a great movie. You right. know what? Why they chose that as their because target number? Can, because they they hypothesized that a studio executive would see that as a decent return on investment. Mm. The other the other thing about that math that that <laughs> amuses me is how how do you prove that right or not? If you give a thirty percent chance and it doesn't, they can say, "Well, see, we we kind of called that." If they say, "If it does end up making more money," they could be like, "Well, we said there was a thirty percent chance that it would." So, well, yeah. No, what actually happened is probably the reason why it's at thirty percent is they've tried this like a hundred times and seventy of them have fucking not been <laughs> right. So they're like, "Well." We'll just call it down to thirty percent chance. We, of being right. That's, we flipped Batman, this coin one hundred times. Yeah. After Batman v Superman, it's going to be twenty nine percent probability of being I mean, correct. So my you know. thoughts on it is like, okay, for starters, you have three people who are clearly not experts in that field. They're maybe experts in data analysis or computational mathematics or or something in academia. But they they don't make movies. They don't understand the movie well, industry necessarily. Do, they do, don't... We, do we know that, or or yeah. could they be data analysts as a hobby and in the movie industry? Uh, I had their names pulled up. I can get. Okay, it. I, I don't know. I was going to say like, because somebody to go to that extent would probably be pretty intense. Yeah, in the I mean, movies. I can get their names real quick. I had I mean, uh... a lot of times those statistics come from not the people doing it, but. People who are good at statistics can act, and can actually figure that shit out for the people who want to know. Well, I I mean I agree. I just say in all fairness though, I'd I'd like to know. Like, is this somebody with with? Because I it mean, is, let's be real. Somebody who's a professional the was like developed by Kang Zhao, a professor of management sciences in the Henry B. Tippy College of Business, and Michael Lash, a doctoral student. So it's actually two people. I'm sorry. So it's a doctoral okay. student 
and a professor of management sciences at a business college that I've never heard of for starters. Oh, what, wait, who's the college? Um, never heard of it, college. Um, Henry tippy. B. Tippy. Oh, Henry B. Tippy. I used to, I used to smoke weed with Henry B. Tippy. I don't <laughs> – I I mean <laughs> used to fire that shit up all day long. Henry B. Tippy College of Business. Let's see. Is this at a uh, University be, of like... Iowa? It's College of Business. Mm. Yeah. Um yeah. Not exactly Harvard. Um just gonna throw that out there. Um oh, so way to alienate an entire state. Well, yeah, that's true. Buy all our fans from Iowa. I, I was I, I was gonna say something about you know saying. like oh what are they businessing I mean, businessing farming community like and then I'm like I'm gonna keep my mouth shut because we may have people well, in right. Iowa and I don't want to be a dick. I when I want some statistics on corn growing, I'll ask <laughs> Iowa. Well, I mean that's a fucking valid 85. point though for real. <laughs> the numbers on 85 ethanol, please. Well, hey, what is there to do in Iowa? Watch corn grow or watch movies? They might be experts. Wrestling. Could be. Wrestling. Um, so, okay. So, that being said, you have these two guys. They make this um, this algorithm, and they run their calculation based on... Uh, I mean, this, this article gives a, a list of things that, that somehow that they've found numerical correlations... Or, or, or ways to incorporate them numerically. I don't... I'm not even going to pretend to fully understand how they would do that, but they they feel strongly enough about it to to release it, so good for them. They bought one of those fancy is, is like, TI calculators. They like haven't... Ten, like, this just came know. out. They haven't... They have no historical evidence of being able to predict anything to any degree of certainty whatsoever so this isn't any I mean, more valid or not valid than any one of us just throwing a number out in the air and saying well there's a 72 and a half percent probability that it's going to earn this much because they have no a... they have no historical uh you know they they, they don't have any track record of of Yo, we've we've been right eighty percent of the time. Like, okay, well now maybe we should listen to these people. Well, that's that's not the case. They've been wrong seventy. So, as a to take it a step further, because here on Comic Book Nerd Nation, I don't like to just put something Make out up there. Numbers. I, I was I getting like to, ready to say. I like to, <laughs> so I I like to go ahead and do a little research when I'm coming back at Brian for for hating on DC and just hugging on marvel's undercarriage so <laughs> i have a list of one two three four five movie review sites that are happen to also be in or tangentially uh related to the movie industry or comic book industry i feel like and, i feel like a special segment needs to be uh added here for uh with a with a with a music and everything, and call it Fox shitting on someone's points. All right, I'm down. <laughs> I don't know what that that news segment is is just yet, but I feel like it it needs a power punch to come into, like a Walter Cronkite feeling, like <laughs> war on communism type shit. Like I don't can know. It be, can it be right after the Fox mix up statistics? That could be segment. another one. That could be another <laughs> segment. Now, in all fairness, in all fairness, in the times when I've, quote, as you call it, made up statistics, I preface that by saying it could be this, could be that, or hypothetically speaking. I don't just say, oh, yeah, this is 72,000. I don't just throw a number out there with zero backing whatsoever. Well, you, no, I was just taking issue with, with uh, last week's claim that, that 20% of the movie-going audience of Deadpool were underage children that, that, that no, can't I go would, Well, like, right, go but back. I was saying, right, but I was saying, I was saying, I would think, high. but I was saying, I would think that there was 20% of the audience was children. So that's an opinion, not a statistic, but there's that. So... A statistic would be something that would be provable. 
So uh, let me preface, none of this is statistics. This is all projections. This is all predictions. Like pro, ProBoxOffice.com. They're projecting that Batman v Superman is going to launch at a $154 million opening weekend. But what is that to profit ratio, though? Uh, well, that won't they won't have any profit by then. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like right. this is this is just them. opening weekend, though. But if it okay. does 154 million in the opening weekend, it's only a couple million dollars off from setting the March record. Right. But see, here's another thing, though, too, that that could skew those possibly is that Gods of Egypt or whatever that new movie that came out with Jamie Lannister in it. I don't really like the, the Gods of Egypt. It was like. A fifty million dollar, it was like fifty million or something like that to make that movie. They had so many tax subsidies and, and breaks for doing that movie that it actually only cost ten million to make them. They only paid out ten million, like dollars, to make that whole movie. So if Batman v Superman, as it may have cost X amount of money, that deduction is also going to be taken away if they had it. Like you know, the city of Detroit gave them tax breaks, which. I'm you know, sure leave it in some of that. Yeah. Like, so I don't, I'm just saying that's, so that could be a thing that could affect right. the $7.3 sure. million dollar no, profit. For sure. I get that. I just, I just, I'm going to run through these. I'm not going to spend too okay. much time. Just, just a little food for thought though. Uh, comicbook.com stating projections in the hundred to $140 million range for the opening weekend of Batman and Superman. And in their opinion, they think it's going to have larger opening numbers than Deadpool. That's pretty I, good. I think it. I think it's possible that it could do that, but I do too. We'll... DailySuperheroes.com predicted a worldwide gross of one billion dollars due to the po the popularity of the characters on the international scale. A billion dollars. Mm -hmm. I guarantee this thing even comes close to a billion dollars in gross. They made more than seven million. ComicBookMovie.com, which happens to be Brian's favorite fucking website post shit to our Facebook all the time from it. It's projecting Batman V Superman at a $210 million opening weekend, which would break the record for biggest opening in March. It would be the biggest DC movie opening ever. And they're projecting it to beat civil war at a $150 million opening weekend. Whoa. How's that? Brian, where you at? Go ahead. I'll wait a second while you rebuttal. Oh, wait. <laughs> Started shit and then didn't show up. Uh, MovieWeb.com also put um, put it in at a projected $154 million uh, opening weekend. My point is, you have an algorithm made by two people that don't work in the movie industry that are saying that it's going to have X percentage chance or X probability to do well. And then now you have all these people that this is what they do. They write reviews. They make predictions on movies. Um, they've been doing it for quite some time. This isn't like their first time doing it. And well, and that we know, I mean, it could projecting. be a guy new on the job. Okay. True, true, true. That that's true. But, they're all projecting a pretty solid opening that across the board, even the lower end of the projections are putting it right in the wheelhouse of, of competing with hunger games for the best March opening ever. That's, that's saying something that's, does that mean that the movie's going to be a great movie? Not necessarily. No, but financially this movie's going to do good. Why is it going to do good right here on my shirt? It's got fucking Batman and Superman in it. The two biggest names in comic books worldwide, period. There's motherfuckers that don't even know who Superman is. They wear the shirt just because they know the symbol. Well, that's like, I mean, there's more, there's uh, the number one, I think it was the international symbol, like the most recognized international symbol is the Superman symbol, period. Like you mean that... the Cam Newton symbol? Oh my god. <laughs> Cam Newton no, I mean the Shaquille O'Neal symbol. Uh, I don't know. I mean, 
I, it would be hard to, to, to verify the most recognized no, that, that, symbol worldwide. That's, I, but... I looked at I looked that up a while ago, and that was it was on nope. a Business Insider had a video, and they said the the top ten most international recognized symbol, like yeah, Nike we, we was had, one of them. I remember um, we had that discussion a while back, and yeah. I remember that being a thing that it was. It was Superman like one was number one. Yeah, I don't remember necessarily if it was number one, but I do remember we, we said that, you know, it was like one of the most internationally recognized. That's that everybody's like, oh, yeah. That's McDonald's part of the reason, arch. like, if you talk about Star Wars, okay, Star Wars dropped the bomb on the fucking box office, blew numbers out of the sky, but it still didn't beat the worldwide gross record that Avatar had. Why? Because it didn't have the international appeal that Avatar had in the Asian markets because well, that, Star and... Wars didn't mean anything. The original three Star Wars didn't mean anything in Asia. They weren't released there in the, in the, uh, in the first initial three releases for episodes four five and six. So it didn't have that sentimental attachment for them. Now you start talking Batman and Superman. That's still part of their culture. Obviously is from America, but that's still part of pop culture there around the world so it's gonna have that huge splash impact in those markets where these other movies don't necessarily have it i i think this is i think this movie's gonna make a ton of money i really do i i a billion dollars i don't know that's whew, man that's a high bar to set but I mean, I saw reviews. I didn't even include it because I thought it was way on the high side. I saw one guy reviewing or uh, projecting that that worldwide it's going to make one point seven billion. That's a lot. I mean, uh, that's a bit that, on the high side. That's a made up number. Yeah, I that's mean, definitely a made up number. That's a lot. That's a lot for sure. <laughs> but that's like saying I'm not. We're not going to beat. The, the, the record. We're going to fucking almost double but, the record. I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, like, that as we're, as we're getting closer to this movie, um, both sides of the fence are kind of becoming more and more of, of advocates for their side. And, and I think that really what you have to do is you just got to kind of wait and see what... You can't go based on the history only. You know? Sure, Marvel's They've got the hot hand right now, but eventually they're probably going to make a bad movie. That's just statistically, that's how it works. You keep making great movies and you try new things and they're great until one time you don't. And then yeah. it's, and then you got, and then you got a flop and then you figure out how to fix it. That shit happens. Well, I'll tell you right now, DC's had their share of flops, so they should have a fucking pretty good understanding Agreed. on how the game works. I, I don't disagree. But here's uh, my problem, though. Some even so, the, even though they've had flops, they've not been bad movies. Marvel's had flops that has flat out been bad movies. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Daredevil, uh, like if, if you had to compare, it to, well, Hulk. But if you compare, okay, let's. Hulk's a good one. Similar colors, similar fucking problems. Uh, Hulk. Versus Green Lantern, I'm picking Green Lantern as, as a much better movie. For sure. Like, for sure. 100%. I, I totally agree with you. But I, and, people, and even if we get a little closer to the timeline, Daredevil versus Green Lantern or something, you know, like... Yeah, uh, Elektra. That would be, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Wolverine Origins. <laughs> I mean... I'm well, just saying. Be, look at how many movies. Those are Fox. Marvel, so to be fair, yeah, to be fair, Fox. like the new Marvel Studios, since they have existed, have had a pretty decent track record. I I, I, I don't disagree with you. I 100 yes. percent agree with that. But but I I'm I'm actually I'm actually with you on this one. Like I I don't see how you have a movie with Superman and Batman in it. Two of the most recognized characters in fiction that people don't show up to see like just because you know like if you hear about a batman or superman movie people are going to go see a batman or superman movie nobody's gonna be like oh well i wonder if it's not gonna be that great and then not go like there are going to be people that show up like sure. there's going to be tons of people that show up i don't see how 
like that doesn't necessarily make it a good movie. It yeah. doesn't mean that you know after even the first if it's weekend, a bad movie, even if it's a bad movie, it's going to be fun to watch. Why? Because Batman yeah. and fucking Superman are on the same screen at the same fucking time. And it doesn't mean that after the first weekend, you know, opening weekend, the reviews are going to come back and be like, oh, yeah, it wasn't that great. And the numbers might dwindle really quickly if people find out that it's terrible, if it is indeed terrible, you know. But you're going to get a bunch of people that go out to fucking see it on opening weekend. That, which, like, I, I have to agree with that. I mean, not only because I do agree with it, but because that was the that was my entire logic behind making the bet with you on that versus Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't see how people don't come out in droves to show up to this movie. Here's the thing, though, about that, that I feel about Batman v Superman. Even if, like, after opening weekend, it gets bad ratings and it's like, oh, it's a flop doesn't matter there's going to be kids who is going to drag their parents to see it regardless just because they don't care if it's a bad movie yeah, or not they get to see their action figure on the big screen you know for what sure. i mean so if, for sure if every if you know if a parent has to take two kids or two parents take one kid there's probably a group of three that's going to go out and see it so yeah it's you know what i mean it's not like it's going to be and where it's really going to help where that where it's that where that aspect is really going to help this movie i think is you know, little Timmy's going to take get, talk his parents into taking him. Well, the parents don't necessarily want to go, right? But what they can do is they can say, "Hey, Peggy and uh, Peggy and Jim, they've got two kids that wouldn't mind seeing this. Now we can take the kids and we can go as couples together to see this movie. The kids can have something to do, and we can go with them and enjoy our evening with the parents. So then it ends up with like a family, and you know." Uh, two families together going to see that's the kind of stuff that I could see potentially happening. That's going to help these numbers. Cause it's, like you said, it's going to be driven a lot of the time from the children, children level that, that look up to these superheroes. I think this is, this movie is, do I think it's going to break records? Probably not. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's going to come anywhere near star Wars, but I think no. it's going to do really good. I really do. I think it, it, it's going to do good enough to continue the fucking franchise that oh, Warner sure. Brothers and DC sort of has. Although, as a counterpoint, I mean, 20% of the nation's youth went to Deadpool and are now left with a bad taste in their mouth with their parents parents are going to this r-rated movie you know so they might say you know mom dad peggy jim take us to take yeah us to go see the but, that, but, uh, but and, of that, and they're gonna of, be like and they're gonna be like whoa 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 i don't know about that i remember what happened the last time we took you to see a superhero here, movie it was that, highly inappropriate and they won't take them of and that I mean, that's 20%, like 20 percent of the nation's youth right there so uh, i mean you can already point. discount God 20% of the... Per I haven't finished fucking talking, man. <laughs> You're repeating, you the, same me thing. Off this You're repeating the same thing. Yeah, you of are. that 20%, 17.5% of those parents, after the kids go to bed, have swinger parties. So <laughs> I... they... They, okay. There's already something in I question. I understand that. that you're you're making fun of, See, well, of my argument last week, <laughs> talking about 20%. But <laughs> in, in all seriousness, you are kind of right that whatever that percentage is, whatever that number of of kids that talked their parents into taking them to that movie and the parents were upset, whatever, whether it was large or small, whatever that number is, those parents probably will be a little bit hesitant to take their kids to go see another superhero movie. That could negatively affect this to some degree. Do I think it's going to be a lot? I doubt it because even if you didn't know as a parent, even if you didn't know who Deadpool was, you definitely know who Batman and Superman are. For sure, you know who they are. I I don't I don't know that I've ever talked to any person ever that wouldn't know who Batman or Super. At least one of the two of those were. I mean, can you can either of you think of a person that you have talked to that's a, over the age of five that doesn't know who one of the, at least one of the two of those uh, are? The majority of the people that I've actually talked to that are above that age that talk that refer to Batman and Superman. Most of those people have like of the general public, not comic book fans have really no idea. Like they do know who they are. They know who they are. They, they know, might not know anything about them, but they know who they, they well, are. They, they definitely. And, but they think they know a lot about them. Oh, for sure. You know, like, I don't know how many times I talk to people that says who would win in Batman v Superman or Batman versus Superman. And then they're like, Oh, 
you know, Batman's going to win because he's got all this technology or Superman's going to win because he's super strong. But they have no basis to back up their their thought. It's just like, who's your favorite? Who wears a cooler suit type thing? You know, so I don't so know. Who I, would win? I don't know. I mean, let's, if, no, let's, I let's break it down. Let's, I, 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 I want to hear. I want to hear your reasoning for who would win yeah. without talking about Batman's technology or Superman's strength, because those sound like pretty legitimate reasons to me. Without, with if you take away Superman's strength and you take away Batman's, no, not if you take Bat- them away. Just no, not take them away. What are no, I want to hear? I want to hear the argument for why one of them wins a fight without mentioning either. No, of those no, I, I didn't mean like without mentioning <laughs> them in general. I fire meant up the back like, pedal. Whoa, 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 fire back up pedal. the back without, pedal. Without, <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Without specifics, like, okay, sure, you could say Batman has all this technology. It's like, okay, well, what technology do you know about that he's used that would that would counter Superman's abilities? I see his point. And nobody, and nobody would be like, oh, well, you know, in nineteen eighty eighty eight or eighty seven, you know, or eighty what was eighty eight or eighty six? I can't eighty six. I think you know Frank Miller wrote in The Dark Knight Returns, you know, with the suit, the kryptonite fucking suit, and Oliver Queen shot Bat or Superman with a fucking arrow with a kryptonite arrow, and you know, so. They don't bring up any of that. They just like, well, he's got toys that you know he's. And in that one issue in 1972, Superman was really strong. That's a good point. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, it's they they don't have any like basis to it. It's uh, just like regardless, they know they know each other from separate films, basically. How about that? So, you know, that's it. That's it. They don't they don't know the. I'm just saying they're not comic book readers. Oh, Brian is uh, Brian's awake. He just messaged us and said that he totally slept through his alarm. But uh, that hmm. sucks. So maybe he'll join us and we can come back if he has a counterpoint. But I think right now, all three of us are of the same opinion that I I don't see this movie not doing fine. At least for the opening, I don't see it not doing well. I just I can't I, see a re- I can't see any way that it doesn't. Yeah, Crush again, I think Henry B. Henry B. Tippy is still high. I can obviously. see it getting poor reviews. I could see it being a bad movie. I could see them being gun shy about the future of the DC cinematic universe. I can see them rethinking their plans post this movie if it doesn't do well. But I don't see how people don't show up. I just don't. Yeah, I I, I can't imagine it. I mean, I I my my fucking parents are talking about going to see this and they don't watch superhero movies they don't know who superheroes are they don't know anything about comic book anything but they're still talking about man that might be a neat movie to go see did uh did did your parents go see deadpool no (laughs) (laughs) but that's that's my point that's my point they haven't gone to see any other comic book movie they didn't even go and see star wars they did mention that it looked looked kind of neat, but they're wow. actually talking about maybe going to see Batman and Superman. You're gonna get that. You're gonna get those people that are just for the nostalgia of it, just for the oh, I know who those are. They're gonna go and see it. Yeah, that's I agree. I, I just can't see this movie not doing well. I, I keep hearing about all these newfangled superhero movies. Yeah, they sound really cool, but I don't know who any of these people are. Maybe I'll go check. I've heard of Batman and Superman. Maybe I'll go check that one out. I didn't it's, know Lou Ferrigno as, was still as fun, as funny as that is. Th- th- that conversation is happening. That's somewhere valid right logic. Now. Yeah, that that's happening for sure. More than once. So, anyway, I'll jump off my high horse unless Brian gets back uh, on here and joins us. Then, I, <clears throat> then I'll fire it up again. But uh, in other news, not even remotely comic book related, Pirate brought to the table a really interesting story. Right now, there's a pretty big conspiracy theory going on. Uh, I think we need a little lead-in musical jingle for the conspiracy theory. You're crazy. All right. So there is a, I'm not going to say widely accepted, but popular kind of conspiracy theory. With a question mark. Trending would probably be a better. Yeah, trending is better. Yeah. So there is a trending conspiracy theory out there that has made it to 
some of the larger websites i've i saw this on yahoo and somewhere else as well uh there's a whack job in this world that truly believes with every fiber of his being that Katy Perry is actually John Benet Ramsey. <laughs> Woo, I'm not oh even God. kidding. He went Mind to the, blown. He went to the extent of making like a 15 minute long explanation video where he superimposes images and and I mean I don't I, I watched some of it. I didn't watch all of it. But he doesn't really give a whole lot of other factual, like, this well, financial record to this financial record, and on this date this happened. You know, it's none of that. It's just like, here's John Benet Ramsey's face, ghost image, fading in over top of Katy Perry's face. Look at the similarities. They must then, be the same person. The like, best what, part what? is, is he was talking like... like I could do the same thing with Pirate and Topher said, right now. If you've ever said that fucking like he's like if you ever said that John Benet Ramsey was murdered, you are superimposing death. You are dealing you're, no, death. No, no, like, he said like you're complicit in. He's like you're complicit yeah, yeah, yeah. in in uh, the false evidence of murder or something yeah. like that. Like now you're making up like weird fucking allegations and shit. Like, but the the part that I found that shits on his whole thing didn't John Benet Ramsey's mom die of like ovarian cancer or something? Like a couple years ago, I don't know. So, like, no, doesn't that completely? Well, if you can really fake, keep up on that, if you, fake well, one, just, if you fake one death, why can't you fake more? Why stop wow. at one? That's, How about the fact that Katy Perry's in her thirties and John Benet Ramsey would be like twenty six right now? It's only a four year difference. That wouldn't be. I mean. That's I mean, not Akon entire... doesn't even know how old he is. That's really. not entirely, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would say if somebody guessed I mean, your I age, guess you could there, fake would be, a there would be five people year age that difference. would, yeah, there would be people that would guess that you're older than you are or younger than you are, you know. So, saying that, saying that that you couldn't misconceive someone's age by a visual appearance by four years is good. God, the John Benet Ramsey murder was twenty years ago. Yep. Yeah. Twenty years ago. Holy shit. And this dude's just well, now coming out with this fucking theory. Well, another thing that's crazy is like what his, his whole I guess thing is like this. I, I don't wanna, like the whole Illuminati basis of superstardom, like conspiracy. Like why? Like, who, <laughs> so, you, know, you know what I mean? Like who would? Who cares? I, I looked this up, and like the first three links, there's you know New York Daily News conspiracy theorists claim Katy Perry is John Benet Ramsey. Some KTBS.com internet conspiracy theorist think Katy Perry is actually John Benet Ramsey. Yahoo News. Reasonable conspiracy theory claims that Katy Perry is John Benet Ramsey. <laughs> what? How is it yeah. suddenly reasonable? Like I I don't I don't I don't I wanna know what the guy looks like that made this up. Because uh, that I, mean Yahoo is no longer a reasonable news outlet? Uh <laughs> 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 Chalk them up there with Fox, I guess. I don't know. Oh, gosh, I just... Uh, I, like, I just don't understand, like, how much free time do you have on your hands to sit around and piece this together? This dude obviously and has like, some... What, like, what, like, how, where does the first step take place? Like, what, like, where's the first... You know, there had to be some turnkey moment when he was like, aha... Katy Perry is John Benet Ramsey. Like, what? I want to know what got him from just being a person to making that that jump in conclusion. Like, what? Like, were you studying John Benet Ramsey still after twenty years? You just really fucking hate Katy Perry. Like, what? Like, I don't. Like, where's the? I, I think I think the dude has some crazy. Like, I think he's one of those like beauty pageant judge whack jobs that like are obsessed with making six-year-olds look like, you know, fucking whatever, like adults, like they sexualize them and, and he just sexualized Katy Perry on top of it. So he just put the two together because he's obsessed with both of them. That's the only thing I could think of. That, it is not a person of normal mind, like at know. all. I don't know. It's really, it's a strange. I think the dude... I think he should start probably by taking a step outside and getting some sunlight. One, and anyone, 
<laughs> anyone who disagrees with him is a false death liar. Yeah, there you go. Who is, who is going to burn for it? So yeah, yeah, right. Definitely got some crazy going on. Yeah. Did you on on a on a? Well, it's not really even slightly related again, but this is kind of a pop culture thing too. Did, did, have you either of you seen uh, or heard of or watched uh, the the series that's on TV right now? That's um, the O.J. Simpson trial, where they've got mm-hmm. uh, I think John Travolta is playing Shapiro, and uh, oh, Cuba Gooding Jr. God. is playing O.J. Simpson. It's supposed to be really, really good. Actually, it's supposed to be really good. It's getting really, really good reviews. What's it? What's what's it on? It's uh, I'm not sure what channel it's on. Maybe AMC. I can't remember. I can't remember. But it's it's just a retelling of the the O.J. Simpson trial. And I think I remember hearing about that. Like, they, or they were making it, but I didn't know it was. It's really. supposed to be really, really good, uh, which is hmm. kind of surprising to me. But I probably still won't watch it. Not gonna lie. Um, Topher. You wanted to talk about the DC reboot. Yeah, so um, the news about this came out a few weeks ago. Uh, we haven't really mentioned it yet because we we're hoping to get some more information. Um, they haven't said a lot about it, but it does look like the the new 52 is going away um, come this June. Um, every book is ending and all a whole new set of books will be launching all as complete number ones across the line. Um, and I guess the goal is, um, to make their comic book line more in line with the movie and TV shows. Um, so I guess like the, the The flash and and arrow shows. Yes, the Flash and Arrow of the comics are now going to resemble the Flash and Arrow of the TV show. Um, the supporting cast and everything, like they're they're basically trying to. If you if you're a fan of the movies and the TV shows, and you go to the comic books, you are going to see the same status quo. Basically, um, <clears throat> they're not, they're they're not looking a terrible idea, I guess. they're looking to align them. Uh, I you know I don't know like. Does that mean? Does that mean like we're not going to see a Flash in in any ba- with Batman or Superman until the movies come out? Well, I mean, there's there's yeah, I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. You know, one being a lot of the reasons that pe- I mean, sure, the the shows have gotten immensely popular, and there's probably more people that watch the shows than read the comics. Oh, so I can sure. understand financially why they would want to go in that route. You know, let's make the comic books look like the shows. See if we can get some people to get, buy comic yeah, books. Get more people to buy um, books yeah. You know, but from from an artistic standpoint, you know, I I'd, I'd rather see the other way. You know, like I, I'm. I watch the shows because I read comics and I like when the TV shows align with the comics, you know, not necessarily the other way around. Like I, I, I guess it's, I guess it's a, an admirable goal to be able to do that. But the, the well, bigger confusion I have is DC. And I, and I've talked about this a number of times. They, they have spent so much energy trying to make sure that their TV and movie universes are separate that and and now if they make them all you know kind of one in the comics, what does that do to the fact that there is a Flash TV show and it, there's going to be a Flash in the Justice League movie upcoming? I mean, Are they going to change that, that plan? Or well, which which Flash do you pick? Do you pick the Flash that's going to be in the movie or the Flash that's in the TV show? I mean, do you think though that this would the fact that they're modeling that they're they're planning on modeling the comic book characters after the image of the the TV or movie characters, not the other way around, would as as a comic book fan would this deter you from watching the TV shows or buying comics though? I mean, I don't think it would. I don't think I, it would deter. I don't know because I don't I think mean, they're going to wander. Like I don't think they're just going to be like, okay, now finally, we don't have to base the 
the Oliver Queen in Arrow on the comic books. So now we can make him this completely See, other but, character and then change the comic books. I don't think that... But if they were... Off, the his, off of the history of the character. But they were completely different characters, kind of. Uh, in, in some not way, completely. Well, okay. I mean, they had differences, not, yes. not completely, but like being that it was an entirely different franchise, it was almost like an alternate reality version. So they could kind of do whatever they wanted. If they're going to tie it more together then what what does that do to continuity like do they have to check with each other now before they do things are they going to tie into each other are they going to reference each other Did like you could say safe... no we haven't gotten oh, okay. any there's there's been no word on on plot details or anything or or how it's going to intermingle if at all um just that they want the they want the comics to be more like the the tv and and movie um so it, you know, in that respect, is Batman now going to be an old retired Batman in everything? Is he going to be, you know, are we well, going he, to have an active Batman anymore? This might not also might not be across the board either. It might. Just, oh, it is. No, I mean, I'm saying like, no, I know the reboot is across the board. Like, okay. like you said, they're starting at one across the board, but they may not take every single character and redo the look of them in the comics. You know, so Batman, they may not do anything with. They may they may keep him looking the same. You know, just like Superman, they'll probably keep him looking the same. Uh, you know, to to some degree at least, I would I would imagine. I don't I, I don't think that they have to take. You know, like in this, especially with the Flash, Pirate, you brought up a good point. Okay, so do you use the Flash from from the the CW show, or do you use the Flash from the upcoming Justice League movie? Well, why can't they just pick... If they're only going... It, and this is a huge if. If they're only going with the look, okay? There's a decent chance that the two might look somewhat similar, for starters, between... I the guarantee CW they show. both have a red suit. Right, okay? So why can't you just pick something, either A, right kind of between the two, or B... Just pick one of the two for the comics, whichever one's more popular. If the CW show is more popular, make your comic book iteration look more like that. What's wrong with that? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Even in the comics now, from artist to artist, you have different takes on on costumes and and everything. I mean, you guys were talking about how um, what was it uh, Liefeld? He he puts a ton of pockets on everything, pouches on every character that he draws. So. What's different between his having him having his take on on a Batman character versus uh, a Capullo Batman versus a Jim Lee Batman? They're all going to have slight differences to them for sure. They definitely, if you lined them all up, they're going to look different between Neil Adams to Jim Lee to Capullo to Liefeld to, to to all the other people. So I mean, I'm, I'm... the 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 interesting thing here is that like. They're going to make, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Suicide Squad, all of these characters, you know, Flash, Green Arrow, Supergirl, they're going to make them all fit basically in the continuity of the TV show. They may not they may not be in the same continuity, but they're going to kind of share a similar origin. So, like, if you go to the comic books and you read Green Arrow, like it's going to be like things that were established as backstory, you know, like origin stories, backstories in the shows and in the movies is now going to be basically accepted, you know, continuity in the comics. Well, but see, they, we don't they, know that for done, sure. They've done that with that's, the new That's the rumor too. anyway. Okay. I mean, that, like it, they've had Mira queen, like she was in, um, or Myra queen, whatever her name is. She was in, um, Green Arrow comics and New Fifty Two. Uh, I mean, do you think? I I wonder if this is just like a subtle attempt to try to uh, diffuse as many people from saying anything they see in the movies as, as. Oh, and Pirate just lost his microphone. I'm not sure he's still talking. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he's he just the dawn oh, the dawning the realization. Sunk. It was like. God damn it. The oh, dawning realization that halfway through his <laughs> point, his mic just straight cut okay. out. So can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yeah we're, we're all good. right. So what I, what I was saying is I wonder if this is just like an attempt to visually separate people from saying 
oh, that's not how they are in the comics when they see the movies. Like, you know, how a lot of people see the movies and they're like, that doesn't have it. That's nothing like the comics. Maybe well, if they just a look like it, less people will say that. I don't know. The main reason is to help sales. I mean, oh, DC sure. sales have been have been poor for a while now. Um, you know, the 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 new Fifty Two um, has not gotten the you know the critical and, and fan acclaim that that they were hoping for. There's been mixed reviews on it, and the line hasn't been doing great. So they're like, well, our shows are really popular. If we can get you know, some if we can get twenty percent of the nation's youth who who go out and like and watch these you know TV shows to go buy a comic book, then damn, we're going to be doing all right. You know, and what's the best way to get them to do that is to make them look familiar and to you know and to make them approachable. You know, something that's like, oh, I know this, I can buy this. Like, it's not like, who is this Green Arrow? This isn't my Green Arrow. Yeah, I mean, they're it, I, that, it, is that what it, they're it, doing? Yeah, yeah. Come they're, come June, they're relaunching. They're calling it Rebirth. They're I know that, but are all they new number ones? Are they the, doing that with like trying to get them closer to the shows? Yeah, as far as I've heard, the idea is that they're trying to make they're trying to make all the characters in the comic books um, more like the their on-screen appearances from the from Batman v Superman and from the TV shows. Well, it looks like I'm saving a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping they would do something like bring it back to the old DC. Yeah, a lot of people were. They're probably, I mean, they're probably not going to throw away, like, New 52 continuity. To, like, there's probably not going to be a complete reboot. Um, but, yeah, I don't know how they're going to change some of the characters without doing a well, bit of a I'm, reboot but I mean there's still a ton of characters that have not been incorporated with the show yeah, and the movie. Yeah, that's that's the other part of this is that that across the entire cool. cast of DC characters you're only talking about right. really maybe 10. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you're not I mean, talking about that's, that's true. It's it's a lot of big names though and, well, what and about... the question then becomes um, like nobody's really said mentioned much of anything about Green Lantern yet. That's because, what I was getting ready to because say because he yeah. hasn't appeared in in a in a TV show or, or a movie. No, but I'm property sure that they yet. I'm sure they know what he's gonna look like in the film. If you don't think that they know what he's gonna look like, then I mean they haven't even cast him yet. They yeah, haven't right. even cast yeah. any of them. I mean, but supposedly but he shows up at the end of Batman versus. Superman. Yeah, but that I heard that that fucking that Reddit thread is complete bullshit. Like. The whole thing about him being in Batman v Superman. Plus, they're already doing production on Justice League. But he's so not. Is he? Back. Did they say he was going to be in Justice League? Yeah. Okay. Did you watch that WB thing? Yeah, there, the there was a section with Kevin Smith talking about. Yeah, I do remember that now. Um. All right. Well, I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see when we get more. A little more information, I think, will go a long way on this because right now a lot of it is really just speculation oh. as far as, you know, is there going to be continuity between the shows and the and the and the comics? Is you know, how are they going to do this when they have multiple instances of the of the characters across the different the, you know platforms? So I think we're just going to need to wait and get. Hopefully, in the coming weeks here, we'll get a little bit more. Um, well, I mean, I'm sure no matter. No matter what happens, if DC launches a whole new thing of number ones, Marvel's going to launch a whole new thing of number ones. Well, they're gonna, Marvel's going to do it regardless. They, right? Yeah, they just look for a reason to pop that number one yeah, right they off. They're just fucking like, bucking number ones off like a motherfucker. <laughs> like, oh, time for – they got a rebirth. Let's have a re-rebirth. Yeah, that's, that's probably How about not some a lie, pre-birth? A pre-birth. Um, so let's – I mean, before we, I won't disagree. How about some placenta coming out with that? Before we get <laughs> on to uh, – what what Topher's been reading. Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, I, I feel it is the only right thing to do is to at least give Brian a chance to present his point of view about this goofy, um, algorithm thing that these people, um, developed. So Brian, we'll go ahead and go with you on this. You really I wanted to talk even, about this. Even computers think this movie is going to suck. Yeah, you didn't really read that article, did you? It was a, it was somebody made an algorithm. No, nah, it was two somebodies that are not what? related to movies at all. 
what, the 32%? Yeah. Yeah, wasn't it a guy who made an algorithm? Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a professor of management sciences and a doctoral student from the business school at the University of Iowa. Yeah, they made an algorithm. Yeah, that has not predicted any movies yet at all. So what? Computers are <laughs> right. So, the it, Terminator? It has it no historical us. evidence that this thing is going to work at all. Hey, this is about to pop his cherry. And... and I I hate I hate to do this to our listeners, but I'm just gonna go back and just just briefly touch on what I brought up through the first part of this. Now that Brian's here, um, so I went ahead and just checked to see what the predictions and forecasts for for the opening weekend are for Batman v Superman by I don't okay. know industry Where professionals, people that actually know people. about the cinema uh, industry. Um, one place, $154 million opening weekend. Um, comicbook.com, 100 to $140 million uh, opening weekend. Um, but they're predicting that it'll be bigger than Deadpool's opening weekend. Um, dailysuperheroes.com projected a worldwide gross of $1 billion due to the notoriety of the um, characters on an international scale. Um, your favorite website, comicbookmovie.com, is projecting Batman v Superman to have a $210 million opening weekend and uh-huh. beating out Civil War that they're only projecting to have a $150 million opening weekend. Um, hmm. Yeah. Pre- surprising. Pretty much um, Where most, are they getting web- from? most websites are projecting that this movie is going to very possibly beat out Hunger Games for the highest opening weekend in March in history. So the question would be, where are you getting your numbers from, sir? I mean, I'm going. With, I'm going with industry professionals. You're going with some dude in Iowa that doesn't know dip diddly dick about the cinema industry. I hope it sets records in March. You know what I think? I think that would be totally awesome. Yeah. See what I did there? Totally awesome, Hulk. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, because it. then I'm gonna have to read the fucking totally awesome. Because Hulk. we have a bet. And he's gonna have to read Totally Awesome Hulk if Batman v Superman crushes Deadpool. On I'll be all right. I, I will write. I will do not only read it, but I will write Wait. a glowing review just if it shuts Brian up. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Fox made a bet again: Superman versus Batman. I met. Okay. I made a bet that Deadpool would have a better opening weekend than than Batman v Superman. That being do you said, not remember this? Are you like I fucking like, completely asleep over there? Like not, you've done nothing said, but yawn and be like, what? Think, What's I going on? Where are we? Batman Who are you? Is Superman we is going to have a better opening weekend than Civil War. I don't think so. Wow, that that'd be a that'd be a tall order. I I'm. Uh, there's several I don't... people that are there's several places that are projecting it to beat by fifty million dollars. Yeah, but they haven't seen it yet. They probably have seen, you seen it yet? Seen the preview of Batman v Superman. Have you seen it yet? Seen it already. Did you get to I see have. it? I went to the future. Yeah. So if if they haven't seen I, it and I they're making the way, predictions, Brian, I went and, to the future. And you're you haven't seen it and you're making a prediction. What makes your prediction more correct than theirs? I had a feeling, like Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I, rest, I, I, rest I went to case. the future. Jesus, I had a feeling. You're on Marvel's dick. Uh, You're just on Marvel's dick. Riding uh, that dick. Dick Rider Brian over here on fucking well, Marvel's nuts. Wouldn't you ride somebody's dick if it knew it was going to get you off? But how do you, how do you know to get you off. How do you know that the next Marvel movie is going to be good? They're eventually they're going to make I a went bad to the movie. Future. They're going to make the a wave bad rider movie. with Rip Hunter and White Canary and some other Team. You see how he conveniently doesn't want to answer the questions that drill down to the truth. I just answered mind. you, but I saw it already. I went to the future on the Wave Rider with my team of extraordinary lame superheroes. See, there he is, hugging Marvel's dick again. Yeah, because they make hole. better movies. What was the last good DC movie that had continuity with its other superheroes? Oh, see now, yeah. See, so not only does it yeah, have to be a good that. DC movie, but it has to follow the Marvel format 
for it to be counted no. as a good movie. Well, yeah. What's wrong with the Dark Knight? What's wrong with the Nolan movies? Nothing. No, but Nolan took nothing. Batman and made it his own. I, it had I'm, no connection to <clears throat> anything else. You don't think I'm that, going. Go I'm going to concede a small point Wait, to Brian. Up Green Lantern? No, I'm going to concede a small point to Brian there because, um, like, maybe that is the Marvel format, but it's what they're trying to do. They are trying to do a crossover movie and put a m- multiple properties in one movie. So without w- without Marvel even being a factor or a comparison point, when was the last time that DC did that? Because they're trying to do it now. We're not saying that, you know... Okay, well, when that, was the last uh, time... They have to do that. When was the last DC time decided they were going to do that. When was the they last could time never Marvel get anything made a good movie? To do that. When was the last time Marvel made a good superhero movie and didn't incorporate their other properties? <laughs> By the opposite when, flip of the coin. But they're not no, trying to do not, that right now. I'm just but saying. Like, but they're it's not, a comic book movie. You I'm have just to saying. If you're going to evaluate it from one side, you have to evaluate it equally from the other side. Fox, but are they? Is Marvel trying to do that? Then why are we is discounting? Marvel... But then why are we discounting Dark Knight? Why are we discounting the Nolan series? Why why are we because saying they... when was the last time DC made a good movie and completely discounting three really good Batman movies just because they didn't try and incorporate Nolan, the rest Batman, of their uniform? I don't universe. think they did his own. He didn't he make it the Batman that we know. He made this his own. He Batman we deserve. Batman. Yeah, it's not the Batman we wanted. It was the Batman we deserve. I don't think you can completely discount the the, the Nolan Batman movies, but oh no, we're not. They were great movies. His, but to his but, point, they were a different they were a different beast. You know, like DC's trying to do something now that they haven't done before, and they don't have a precedent. If and so, it's a valid comparison point to say okay. when have they ever done this right. because that's what they're trying to do now saying when has marvel same... ever done not crossover well they're not trying to do that so okay. why well, it's by that not same, relevant by that same token look at the first several attempts by marvel to do the crossovers how did they go what were the first several attempts to uh, do crossovers? well incredible hulk was the very first one that movie was pretty awful well no iron man was before that no, Hulk you're talking was, about Hulk was the first one. Hulk, yes. Incredible Hulk was the second one. Are you talking no. about Ang Lee's Hulk with the big giant no. green what? thing? No, no. Edward Norton. Edward Norton's Incredible Hulk was the first one. That was the very first one of the series. No, it wasn't. Iron yes, Man it was. was. No, it wasn't. No, Iron Man was. Are you Iron sure? Man was <clears throat> positive? Yes, because Tony Stark pops He's up at the, at the end, end of all. Yeah. Okay. But it was all, who, Iron Man. Hulk, Iron, but who's in Iron Thor? Man? Who crosses into Samuel, Iron Man? Samuel Jackson. Yeah. Uh, you and had, what movie uh, was he crossing name? into it from? He was talking about the, the connecting the universe the and uh, Shield. I guess. Uh, okay, name? but even so, in. even so, at the beginning, you had the Incredible Hulk, which was not a good movie. It wasn't. It wasn't a bad and movie. Before that, okay. when, when was uh, Electra? Electra was another perfectly good example of them trying to cross, cross their, oh well, yeah, their universe with two different people. So how did that go? Was that a good movie? Those were, those were isolated movies too. No, they weren't. No, every no, company wasn't. has ups or down, but that's my point. To start the that's crossovers, my point. That's exactly like the my fucking universe point. Universe was Iron Man. That's my point. Is that every mo- every company has ups and downs. Eventually. Marvel Studios will try to do something new, and it will fail, or it will stumble. It may not fail, but it will make a subpar movie. Oh, we're just at talking about point. Marvel Studio movies because Daredevil and Electro wasn't Marvel Studios. No, but it's Marvel, and who's making yeah. Marvel movies right now? But Marvel Mar- Studios. They weren't right now. then. They weren't set up then. I didn't say Marvel they were. Studios. I didn't say they were. Then why are we bringing them in this? Oh my god. He's just the fucking dick hugging is strong with this one. Well, because they make good movies. You just you, but the but the problem is, is that you won't even give somebody a chance to make a good movie. You're going into this. They and, had their chances. WB I, and DC and have been it, making their it. own just, movies. They've never Marvel made... didn't make like Blade, Daredevil. They weren't. Marvel Studios wasn't a part of that. Kevin Feige wasn't a part of that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, either way, uh, I think we've talked about it enough for this episode, at least. 
I'm sure this is going to be an ongoing diatribe. Um, <clears throat> Topher, what have you been reading? I'm I'm worn out. I don't even feel like talking about it right now. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. That kind Let's of do it next too. week. Let's do that. Let's lead with it next week. Of what you've been reading right off the bat for the first time in months. Yeah, or like three weeks, but that's cool. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, I can't count. You know okay. that. We'll think about it. <clears throat> that's it for this episode. I'm Fox Two. We got <clears throat> Pirate. Bye. <laughs> Topher. Bye. And the whole effing dick rider. I got this program that I've been trying to keep in my nose. <laughs> <laughs>